Let's talk a little bit about object references and memory management, because it's important to do that if you have a decently sized game. I'm going to take you through my own player character here, and um, before we start, I want to make one thing clear, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Because as everybody else here, I know how easy it is to just throw in some hard references and call it a day, and that's a very bad pattern to do. So let's take a look here at a couple of things. First and foremost, we can check out the size map of any given actor, and that will tell us how large the total memory footprint of a specific class is. So that is the size of like all the components and the code in that class, as well as everything that it directly references. Because everything referenced by this class is also getting loaded into memory anytime this class is loaded into memory. So going into the size map, we can see um, how it's broken down and where most of the data is coming from. And it is important that for this use case, uh, in the size map, you change this from disk size, which is the size on disk, to memory size instead. Because this is everything that's getting loaded into memory related to this actor. And in this case, that's about 83 megabytes. So not that much at all. The other thing that we want to take a look at is going to be our reference viewer. That's going to be a graph which... This shows you every single class in your game, every single asset that references directly this, in this case, the player character class itself on the left side. And then on the right side, we have the same thing, but everything that is referenced by the player. And this is the kicker, because for the player, it doesn't really matter, right? The player is going to be loaded into memory pretty much always, so you can get away with a little bit more. But if this is not very optimized for a certain type of enemy or maybe a certain type of decoration or whatever that has very bad references that can become a bit more of a problem because right now i have uh, anytime the blueprint for my sword or my scythe or whatever is loaded in it indirectly loads in the player as well but this sword is never going to show up in the game without the character also being there so that is fine but I also, in a lot of gameplay abilities for the enemies, I'm casting to the player character. But it's more so the right-hand side here that I want to talk about today, which is everything that is loaded in the moment the player is active. Because some of the things like the animation blueprint, of course, that's always going to need to be present whenever the player is present. But I also have a couple of things here, if I go all the way down, I've got this specific gameplay ability here uh, that is a teleport attack and that is always going to be loaded by uh, the player eventually i'm going to move this to being always loaded by the sword so this will only be loaded when the sword is active uh, but this gameplay ability that also loads in uh, a couple of animations and those animations don't need to be in memory until i actually am ready to play them the game is going to have about 60 to 70 animations for the player and those don't all need to always be available in memory especially since this teleport attack can only be done when the sword is the active weapon when we go to a different active weapon you can't even do this ability so there's no need for the animations that are specific to the sword to be stored in memory uh, when i can't even use them to begin with and this is where we get to the soft object pointer thing i needed to explain the issues with hard object references before we can go into how to use the soft object references. Because I'm going to replace these right now uh, for you on video with soft references instead. That way I personally choose when I load them in and out of memory, which is vastly preferable for most cases. So let's look up that gameplay ability and open it up. So what this does is it does a lot of stuff, right? Uh, we have these montages to play, and you can see there's quite a few of them, and they are a blue pin, and this type of blue means a hard reference. But if I update this to being a variable instead, uh, we can say montage to play one, we can set this variable instead of being a animation montage object reference, we can set it to a soft object reference instead. Uh, and we can change that variable type, that is entirely fine. And now if we reconnect this, it will automatically uh, 
change the pin from a soft one to a normal reference, but it's not going to always keep this asset loaded. If we try to run this now, this is going to uh, either not work or in the worst case scenario, it's going to just straight up crash the game because this is a reference to something that's not loaded into memory yet. We need to manually load it into memory. So let's go back to our event uh, activate ability, which is just like the begin play of a, a gameplay event. And then after we have decided, yes, we're going to commit this ability. So we're going to actually do this ability. That is when we're going to load these things into memory. And we'll need to make a little bit more room for this in a moment. You can make this into a separate custom event with like a delegate and event dispatcher call uh, if you want to. I'm not going to do that for right now. Uh, let's get the soft object reference here. And if we drag off that and we just type in load, we can load asset blocking. This is going to load in the asset on the main game thread, meaning that it's going to pause everything, rendering, input registration, whatever, until this is loaded and then it's going to move on, which is less than ideal. If it's just a small asset like this one, uh, you probably can get away with it. And in some cases you need to do this because you need to make sure that when you move forward, you have that reference uh, working now. But most of the time, uh, what you actually want to do is you want to load this async asset. This is going to load this in the background. The rest of the game is going to keep playing and this is going to load. Uh, you can keep executing other code while this runs. And then once it is completed, we uh, run whatever code we put into the completed pin. So in this case, we'll commit the ability and then we'll async load this asset. And then once completed is the rest of the code. That way, whenever we get to this over here, we can be uh, assured that the asset is loaded into memory because we manually told it, hey, we need this asset in a bit, start loading it in. And it doesn't execute any of the other code until it's actually loaded in without stuttering the game. And then if we go back here and refresh this reference viewer, uh, we're going to reset the camera view as well. So that's going to be uh, a bit of a thing. But you can see one of these lines has now become a pink line instead of one of these uh, white lines. And this means it is a soft object reference. So we still have a visualization as to, okay, this ability uh, has a reference to uh, whatever this animation is and whatever is linked to this animation as well. But we can see it is a soft reference now. So this doesn't automatically load in anytime the player character is active at all. It only becomes loaded into memory when we tell it to. Now, in Blueprint, at least, I don't think uh, there is directly a way to clear up the memory that you allocated when loading in this asset. Uh, whenever this specific object, in this case, this gameplay ability uh, is removed, so when the ability ends, that memory will be freed up anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. If you want to have exact control over when you unload that memory again, if you really want to get that granular, you will have to uh, do that in C++, I'm afraid. And we're not going to talk about that right here today. Just as easily as that, though, I can promote uh, this other animation to a variable as well, montage to play two. I can say, hey, we're going to change this uh, to a soft object reference. And you can do the same thing with class references, right? Most of the time, you don't really use class references too much, at least I don't. But if you have a class reference, that more or less works the exact same way. Whenever you have a hard reference, it just loads in the entire class whenever you have a reference to it. You can have a soft class reference that does the exact same thing, uh, more or less. So what I'm going to do here is this is not exactly uh, optimal in any way, shape or form, but I'm going to async load this asset and then I'm going to async load this next asset only once this is completed and uh, move it on in a chain like that. That might make the loading time for this ability a little bit longer because it's first loading in all of the assets and then moving on. This is hardly ideal because if we stack like a lot of assets like this in the beginning of my ability, there's going to be a noticeable delay between me trying to execute the ability and the ability actually executing. In this case, we're only doing this for three animations in total. There's a third one that I'll do in a moment. So it's not going to be that big a deal. But do be aware that async load asset does actually take time. So whatever may be the case, there could be better places in your blueprint to implement it compared to what I'm doing right here.
and let's load in the third asset in much the same way. Again, we're going to wait until the last one completes before we start loading in this one. What we can also do is not wait for this one to complete and just start loading in the next one immediately and just kind of trust that by the time the third one, which is the last to start loading in, is loaded, that the previous two are already loaded in as well. Usually you'll probably be fine doing it this way. This might save you a split second. Uh, I like being safe about things and just doing it this way instead, one at a time. And back in the reference viewer, if we update that now again, we'll be able to see that we have to scroll quite a bit down. But we now have three pink lines because we have three animations that only get loaded in when they become relevant. And if I go in here, my special ability will still work fantastic. There's nothing wrong with this. This still works. And again, now that the special ability is done, uh, that space in memory is just immediately getting freed up anyway. So in this case, I saved myself a little bit of memory by not loading in animations. Animations are really light on memory usage, so it's not the most important place to be doing this. Uh, things like loading in static meshes or skeletal meshes, that kind of thing, with materials attached to them, which have textures, which that thing adds up real quick. Uh, those kind of things, it's much more important to do this kind of thing with. And if you're referencing entirely separate actors that you're doing things on as well, do make sure that if you can get away with it, you use soft references instead of hard references, because it's going to save you quite a lot of memory usage, making your game perform just that much better, specifically on lower end hardware. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas,